Hello everybody, welcome, we are live, welcome to week, well, day 7 of Antico 2022. It's been a week. It's going to be the 7th day, the final day of the week. One week closer to Christmas, one week closer to getting all 50 stars, hopefully. We'll see how today goes. Yesterday was pretty easy, and so was the past 6 days, so I have a strong feeling today's not going to be good. Today's probably going to be a long one, a tough one. I don't know. Hopefully it isn't too bad. Oh well, it's Christmas, I'm sure we, I'm sure we can love a challenge. Um, yes, yeah, so let me just get into my environment, make sure I have all my files. That looks about right. Okay, bin into my txt file. Get ready to input my data. Right. That's about right. Okay. Right, so, day seven. Final day of the week of Advent of Code. Of the first week. Let's go in three, two, one. See you after the time lapse. Okay, that's part one done. Yeah, Eric was so scummy there. I'll talk about it afterwards. I'm quite happy with that. I'm not sure how fast it was. A bit tough, but I don't know. I'll have to play back the recording to see how fast that was. But Eric was incredibly scummy. <laughs> I mean, I was kind of laughing at it now, but man, I was annoyed. Could I see that recording? Oh well. Um, I'll do part two now. Hopefully, hopefully, he's not scummy anymore. <laughs> but I don't know. Fair enough to him. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll see you after the time lapse for part two. After I copy my files.
Okay, that's part two done. Yeah, I think I did that pretty quickly. Um, like six minutes, I don't know. Um, yeah, at least it wasn't too bad on part two. Ooh, my heart is pumping, yeah. That was fast. I, I don't know if I was fast, but I feel like I was working fast. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a pretty tough question, actually. Um, very interesting, though. Mm, my favorite so far, actually. Lots of cool stuff to talk about in my solution, in my opinion. Um, oh, that, that was good, that was fun. We need more of that. Um, but yeah, let's just go to the challenge. Um, and look at the problem statement. Right. Day 7, no space left on device. No alliteration either. No space left on device. Like my computer. It's on 70% storage capacity. You can hear birds chirping and raindrops hitting leaves as the expedition proceeds. Is it right now? Occasionally, you can even hear much louder sounds in the distance. How big do animals get out here anyway? Rhetorical question. The device the elves gave you has problems with more than just this communication system. You try to run a system update. Yay, more problems. Blah blah blah. In fact, because I run Linux, I wonder if I can just run this. Yeah, just some random command. I was chosen. But yeah. Perhaps you can delete some files to make space for the update. You browse around the file system to assess the situation and save the resulting terminal output, your puzzle input, for example. Okay. And this is all just an example. The file system consists of a tree of files, plain data, and directories, which can contain other directories or files. The outermost directory is called slash, that's the root directory. You can navigate around the file system, moving into or out of directories and listing the contents of the directory you're currently in. Within the terminal output, lines that begin um, dollar are commands you executed, um, very much like modern computers. Like a modern computer, for example. Um, yeah, obviously this wouldn't work on Windows, and I think it, w it should work on Mac OS because it's Unix-like, uh, but it works on my computer, which is great because it means I knew what all of this already meant, so I'm also not going to bother talking about it because I, eh, I already know this. Um, this was pretty interesting because obviously the output of a list command is not it's not actually this, and the output of a list command would just be something like that, um, and not that. I'll put a zoom in for that. Zoom in for you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean the other commands are true, like cd desktop that works, and then cd dot dot go outwards. They're, they're all true, and even cd root, um, cd slash, that takes you to the root directory, and just see it change there. Anyway, um, and then this this command, um, this means that the directory you're currently in um, is another directory. So like, for example, what I have on my current computer, um, it's just that like, if it's in blue, it's a directory, and if it's not in blue, then it's a file. Um, but here, at least I have like real commands, because obviously, you can't just use colors in, in AOC input. But anyway, that, that's just what the commands mean. Um, no need to really talk through them. Hopefully they're quite obvious. Given the commands and output in the example above, you can determine that the file system looks visually like this. Um, yeah, and then these are just even more examples. Since the disk is full, your first step should probably be to find directories that are good candidates for deletion. To do this, you need to determine the total size of each directory. The total size of a directory is the sum of the size of the files it contains, directly or indirectly. Directories themselves do not count as having any intrinsic size. Example. To begin, find all of the directories with a total size of at most 100,000, then calculate the sum of their total sizes. In the example above, these directories are blah blah blah. As in this example, this process can count files more than once. Find all the directories with a total size of at most 100,000. What is the sum of the total sizes of those directories? Right, that's a problem done. Firstly, day 7. It's day 7 this year. Um, let me just show you. Now I remember this very, very vividly. Day 7, two years ago. 2020. It's the rucksack one. Not the bag one. I don't know if any of you did um, 2020 AOC, but man, this is so similar of a problem. I'm mean, gonna say so similar, it's really just things contained within things, and therefore you need recursion. Um, yeah, Eric absolutely killed people with this problem last two years ago. Um, and yeah, clearly he's kept it going on. Because um, day seven this year, the same day, day seven, also has recursion. Also gonna knock a ton of people out. Also gonna make people's lives harder. Um, I guess, neat Easter egg from Eric, <laughs> but not, not good for us. Um, yeah, this was actually the first time I ever learned recursion, so I was pretty slow on this years ago. But anyway, let's go back to this problem. Can't believe it still reminds me, I'm still getting flashbacks to that day two years ago. Um, anyway, yeah, I don't think there's too much else to talk about. Yeah, it is recursion because this is just a file tree that looks like this. I quite like the visualization I put in here. Very, very helpful, even for me. 
Um, but I, do, I don't know how well people would understand this because I'm obviously used to Linux. I use Linux, so I'm like extremely well accustomed to like this idea. So if you maybe you're not well accustomed to this idea, I'm sorry if I'm glossing over the details, but I mean <laughs> it's there. Um, but yeah, you're just basically given me doing a ton of commands or like the guy doing a ton of commands, um, and you basically need to build a directory or like file tree, file structure out of that, and then use a file structure to recursively go through all of the program, all of the directories, and find the um, this file sizes. And I mean that's essentially what this means. This process can count files more than once. That is what recursion means. <laughs> that is the definition of you should use recursion. Um, yeah, and I mean just I just quickly read this. Like, yes, I need recursion. Yes, I mean when I was solving this, this last bit again, not not too useful. It does technically contain the question, but I need the whole context. Thankfully all of this I didn't really need. Um, I had to read this bit. Um, I did a quick I did some quick comparisons as you probably saw in the time lapse, just between their example input and the example like visualizations and like some of these examples. So I need to make sure I knew what the question was. So I, I, I read it, like up until this point I knew it was going to be difficult. So I thought it's better to ensure I got the question right in my mind before I try solving it and then realize later on that I misinterpreted the question. Because I mean for the easy days you can just kind of guess the question. Because if you have to rewrite like five characters of code, that's perfectly fine. Your code's really short, it's really easy. But not on day seven. Yeah, so I mean Let's go over to my solution for this problem. Um, I mean, first, I'll probably abstract the problem. Like, essentially, what you need to do, you're given a list of commands, turn that into a file, um, file structure, file tree, and then you need to recursively go through each directory and find all the directories with uh, a collective file size of under 100,000 or 100,000 inclusive, actually, because it says at most. <coughs> um, that's essentially what all you need to do. And once you find those files, you just add on. Um, the file sizes or the directory sizes to your running total, and your running total is the answer. Yeah, um, oops, yeah. So, I mean, firstly, you probably saw that I was using the example input, this one, because obviously this is a pretty long program, um, and it's pretty, really hard to see if you're correct or not, um, especially because recursion. Human brains just cannot understand recursion, that's a fact. And so, using this just kind of helped, um, just helped ensure I was on the right tracks and I was doing my recursion correctly. Um, so thank you, Eric, for the examples. Yes, yeah, so my problem. Um, I have to zoom in quite a lot because it's, it's a bit longer code actually, longest code so far. Yeah, so I started off with this line. Today I just kind of assumed I would need to spit lines. Um, again, I don't feel like typing that out every time since I need it basically every day. Right, from collections import default dictus dd. Um, you probably saw me do this like midway through my code, not at the start, um, but that's because. So essentially, I'll kind of give you an overview of my code. So what Y does is Y is a directory. So I'm, I'm basically building a graph, right? A tree or graph, whatever you like to call it. I mean, technically, it is a tree. So I'm building a tree. Um, and then this is my DFS or like recursion algorithm that goes through the tree um, to do all the logic. And then this bit, the longer bit, is what converts the input into the tree. I don't know why it's longer. Um, even though like this bit is like the really hard bit, it's so short, but it's, this is the long bit, and a bit where you can mess up. Anyway, yeah, so y is just the tree, yy, that's a dictionary of the file sizes, or like the data space of each file, of each file. Um, and that's just because there's no easy way, like I didn't think of an easy way to store that information, like the file size number, so I just created a new dictionary to do that, um, that's why y. So y is the file tree, yy is um, a dictionary or hash table of um, the file sizes to the file name. And you, okay now this is the pretty cool bit, I was pretty proud of this. Um, remind me of um, Amateur Code 2021, I think it was day 11? Nope. <laughs> day 10. Yes, day 10 it was. Um, you know, this this one, I don't know if any of you did this again last year, but day 10, um, this was perfect to, to use a stack. And like, day 10 was the first day I ever used a stack, like, connected the dots between what a stack is in theory and how it's used in practice, and it was so, so cool. So I would recommend, um, if you haven't done day 10 before last year, if you don't know what a stack is, do day 10. That, that was good. Um, yeah, that's good. Um, 
yeah, so I used a similar idea this time. Again, like the only time I've ever used a stack in this case since last year, which is pretty cool. But I liked it. So you here, use a stack. So it's a list, but I'm implementing it as a stack. Like I'm using it as a stack. Right, so what this does, it goes through every line um, in your input. Um, and then if your line is a command line, then it runs all of this. Um, and then you kind of just have to like keep narrowing down your options until you like identify what exactly you want. So first I identify, am I in a command? Okay, yes I am. Right, now you have to identify, what command is it? Is it a CD or is it an LS? Um, and so like here I identified it's a CD. Um, again, just trying to reference like the, the right characters in each string. Look for consistencies, look for patterns in your input. And that's a really fast way to try and like narrow the down these options. Just looking for what's consistent across your input and what values you can reliably use to differentiate different things. So like the uh, second index of i, so the third character of the line, is always going to be c if the command is cd. Um, and I've narrowed this down, so I know all of this is cd. Um, and here is just again, narrowing it down even further. So if there are double dots, like here, character 5 is always going to be a dot, or like character index 5 is always going to be a dot. Um, and then if it isn't, then it has to be, and there are only two options, it can either be a dot, like double, a double dot, or it can be like a directory name. And so if it's not a dot, then it's going to be a directory name. I mean, you saw here, I did just like um, comment this, I usually don't comment. This was just to make it nice and clear, because obviously it's pretty clear that this, is, this means it's going to be cd dot dot. Um, it's not clear what this would mean, because you obviously you can tell it's not going to be cd dot dot, but what is that? And in this case, it's um, like I wrote in. That means I just like going into another file. Because cd dot dot goes out of the file, like out of the directory and upwards. If you think about the tree, whereas cd directory goes into the directory, it's in downwards. Right, and this is where I mess with my stack. So my stack is essentially, um, it's essentially the the directories I've been to in order. Kind of the directory tree just really flattened and more just my reference throughout the code as opposed to like a real directory tree. Um, so we'll start off with in because like obviously the first command of the entire input is cd root because that's where you're going in first. And what you do, what I do is this, this by the way, that's just, um, that's just this bit, that's just the name of the directory. So like in that case it would be that, in this case it would be this, etc. Um, so yeah, what I'm doing is I'm adding the name of the direct directory that I'm going into to the stack. Um, and if I keep seeding down the directories, down into the directories, I keep adding more and more to the stack. But if I ever decide to go out of the directory with cd dot dot, then, I, then I'm popping from the end of the stack because if I got my if I got my stack um, of things of like directories I've been to, so first a slash, then say a b c, but then if I cd dot dot out of c. Um, then I'm moving downwards back from where I came from and because you have a stack you kept track of where you've been to um, Maybe a bit hard to get your head, head around um, I probably drawing would have been better, but I'm a bit low on time. <laughs> you can see it's almost 11 um, Yeah, I think that's the idea of a stack because If you're CD dot dotting you're going backwards one But if you're going into something then you're going inwards. That's what stacks really are good for is keeping track of where you are along that chain um, There are other ways you could do this but I think the stack is the most elegant, the best way, the fastest way to think of it, the fastest way to implement. And it's the most convenient thing to use, and you'll see why soon. Um, yeah, it's also really simple to code as well. Like these, these, literally these two lines, is what controls the stack. And you know, with the stack, it also means that the last element or the top element um, is going to be where you currently are. So you can just reference it with like u minus one. Right. So that's the cd command done. If you want cd. Then it's got to be ls because there's only like two commands or two lines to start with dollar sign cd or ls. And so if it's ls, you know, I thought about doing something, but realistically, you don't need to do anything. Like ls, the command ls is written for the sole purpose of having these lines displayed. Um, so there's no point of really doing anything with ls, so I just kind of pass it, like ignore it. Pass just means ignore, like continue doing whatever you're doing. Um, yeah. Just because there's really no need for it. I've already kept track of the, my current directory with the stack. Um, and so what's Alice going to do? Nothing really. Because, and I mean, this is kind of the fast way you have to think when you're programming with this type of data and how to pass it fast. Because after ls, there aren't going to be any dollar signs like on the lines directly after ls, which means that there's not even any point in like, doing anything here because if there aren't any dollar signs, then you're straight away going to like run this chunk of code. And that chunk of code is only run when ls is run directly before it, if that makes sense. 
Like the only lines you see here um, that don't have a dollar sign in front of it are lines that are directly behind an LS, like these directly behind an LS. Look at any random line. This directly behind an LS. Um, hopefully that made sense. So what we do again? I read the out. I read the comment here. So this block only runs, and we can guarantee it runs on the LS output lines, because like those are the only lines in the input code that don't start with a uh, dollar sign. And dollar sign just kind of means command. Um, so yeah, that's kind of why Eric used dollar sign there. Right. So now we then have to figure out if this thing we're displaying here um, is a directory or a file. Because those are the only two, again. You're looking for the only things that can be displayed. And Eric said in the question, and you can read your input. The only things displayed are either a file like this or another directory like this. And so first I identify identify the directory. Um, pretty simple, just looking if the line starts with the space. Um, just because I don't know, maybe Eric did something like. I need to be honest, I didn't really do the space. I just did that. Um, yeah, you're probably just done if like the first character is D. Anyway. Um, and if not, then it's going to be a file, so this chunk is run. Um, yes, yeah, so now getting back to what this code actually is. Um, so I said why is my tree up here. Um, why is my tree of my files? So what I'm doing is I'm taking the current directory, um, which would be you. Um, and from y, like the u of y, I'm appending all of the files that are in it, essentially. So for every directory, it has every directory is a key in Y, and the value of all of those directory keys is a list. And I know that just because I created a default dict with list. It's like even if there's no list, it auto generates a list. It's like for example here, I append something to it. Um, by default, if it's the first time I'm appending something, there is no list to append to. So what this um, import does from collections, the default dict import, is you can specify something here. It's like I can specify int, and now it's going to default to zero. If I specify list, it's going to default to that, um, which is quite useful, because it means I can append something without really defining it. Um, so I can just assume it's already there, and it's, yeah, it's already there. Right, so to that, so this is the directory, and I'm saying that all of these are in that directory. So what I'm essentially doing here is pretty basic um, graph thing. I don't really have time to explain this right now, so really sorry about that. Um, but it's, it's just really just a tree where, where, the, where the key is the directory name and the value is just a list of everything in the directory, directly in the directory. So one level down the directory. So that'll be, um, for example, let, let's just use this as an example. So this would be the key and it, these two would be like, this would be one value in the list and this would be another value in the list and that list would make up the value of this key, if that made sense. That's essentially what the dictionary is. Um, yeah, but you saw me, like, my first answer was wrong, <laughs> unfortunately. But Eric really caught me out here, so scummy. Because what he didn't say is that file names, maybe even directory, I think it's directories actually. Yeah, I think for me it's directories. That's the one I saw. But directories could be repeated, like the name of directory. So you could have, like, directory A, and then within directory B, and then within directory B you could have another directory called A. So you have the same directory name, but in different places. So they're different directories. But they have the same name, which means that my original naming scheme did not work. And I feel like that would be the same for many people. It took me a while to figure that out. Um, I mean, you probably saw me just staring at my input for quite a while, like running through it in my head, running through what the code would be doing. I was absolutely bamboozled when I saw this. I was like, CTCTT, okay. What? What is that? How did that go down there? What? Am I doing something wrong? Um, yeah, I quickly, pretty quickly realized that Eric was just playing with us. That he did really just I wasn't wrong. He just decided to have directories with the same name, multiple directories with the same name in different locations. And I mean, I also just assumed that files would be the same case. I wasn't gonna go through the entire code just to check whether the same was true for files when I could implement it in my own code for like in yeah, like five seconds. So we're making the assumption that files and directories um, can both have multiple directories and files that are named the same thing. So what that means is you have to use the full path, the absolute path, um, and not the relative path. So like so far I've just been using file names and directory names. I can't do that anymore. I have to use the full path from the beginning, because obviously from the beginning the full path is going to be unique for every single different thing. Um, whereas the name may not be unique. Like imagine you have a folder called A in your documents and a folder called A in your downloads. Just using the file name, you cannot differentiate between both of them. 
if you use the absolute file path, then you have documents slash a and download slash a. So using the full path, you can differentiate between the two different files. And that's essentially what I'm doing here. And that's the beauty of using a stack in this case. I just got really lucky to be honest. A stack was useful because a stack, a stack is essentially literally everything above you, which means that um, you have your absolute path in the stack. Like your stack is the absolute path. Um, and that's that's literally what I did here. I just joined everything together in the stack. I just turned the stack into a massive string, and that's my absolute path. That's what I did here. And then here, when I'm referring to the file, I obviously need to append the file to my path. Because my, my path right now is just a list of directories, like a string of directories. Um, but when referencing files, I obviously need the file name as well. I just add the file name here. Um, and obviously, I did the one here. Um, well, I mean, that's just adding directory name. Because I mean, what this command is. This command is the current directory you're in, whereas when I'm doing this one, and I want to plus the directory I'm adding, or the file I'm adding, which I've just discovered. Um, again, it's a bit difficult to explain, I don't have too much time, but hopefully you get the idea. And yy, yy is just the map of where, of each file name as the key, and each file name's size as the value. So that's what I'm just doing here, pretty simple here. Right now the recursion. You can't understand recursion, it's just humanly impossible to understand recursion. So don't try, but oh well. Part 1. T was my answer. Um, global T, just because I'm up updating T um, every time I can satisfy this criteria of the file size of a directory being under 100,000. <coughs> and I just need to set T to global because obviously functions only use local variables. So this will create a bit of a mess. You can't really edit a variable outside the function. To be honest, I don't really know the rules perfectly. There are specific sets of rules which you may know. Um, but if you're referring to a variable outside the function, generally it's easier just to global it, just by pressing, just by literally adding this line at the start of your function. Um, global and then the variable. It treats the variable like just normally, as you would expect throughout the code, as opposed to a local variable in the function. Yeah, so that's my function admin, I guess, done. Oh, yeah, TT. TT is just the current size, and C is just your current directory slash file. Right, so this is the base case um, of my recur recursive algorithm. That's basically saying, is C a file? Because obviously you can't go any deeper in a file, so you can't do recursion on a file because a file is the end. A file is like the end of the tree. Um, and obviously YY is just a map of all of my files and sizes, as I said before. And so if where I currently am is in, the, is in all the possible keys of YY, then I have to be in a file. So if I'm a file, I'm just going to return the size of the file because that's the base case. Um, really nothing to it, like a file, the size of a file is literally the size of a file because there's nothing in the file, like no more directories. Okay, but if I am a directory, I have to run this code. Um, and what I'm doing is for every subdirectory slash file in me, in my directory, I'm going to run this code. It's this code under here. And that code is the recursive bit because you see I'm calling D again here, which is the name of my function. And I'm calling it with a fresh file size, because obviously we're assuming it starts from zero, everything starts from zero, every file size starts from zero. You can't magically start with like 10 gigabytes. Um, and you're inputting, oops, you're feeding the current um, directory slash file as i, because i is what you're iterating through here. So you're going through a loop of all of the children of where you currently are, um, and i is the child, and you're just putting it here. And because this function just spits out the file size of whatever it is, whether it's a file name, like a file as we discovered up here, or as we'll soon discover a directory, it spits out the file size. So you're just adding to the running total of the current directory's file size, current directory's size, you're adding that. That's what TT plus equals that is. Right, so now TT is now officially the, at this point right here, TT is now the size of your directory including everything under it. Um, and therefore you kind of got what you wanted, right? So now finally you need to do is you just need to check if it's under that um, 100,000 barrier that Eric was mentioning up here. Um, and if it is under that 100,000 barrier, then you just add that to your running total. Um, you know, that's why global T is used because we're adding that to our running total called single T. Um, and of course the function has to return at some point, it has to return the file size of the directory so sorry, the size of the directory or file. So we've already done the case for returning the size of the file. Um, so now we're just doing the case for returning the size of the directory, which is 
just chuck it at the end because obviously if you have a file your code like your function stops running at this point your function stops running as soon as you return something so all of this isn't run if you're a file if you're a directory it is run and therefore you need to return something maybe it may be a bit hard to get your head wrapped around you can kind of think of this as a tree and this is a dfs algorithm um or it's like some general recursion but dfs is recursion it depends how you think of it i love graphs so i'm thinking of it as a graph slash tree graphs graphs are the best you know it's a directed it's a directed graph not a tree directed graph anyway um yeah then we just have to actually run it right which actually like run the function so obviously our file size starts from zero and our base um our starting directory is root slash um and you just print the answer t so yeah it's pretty long um I don't think there's too much else to say, apart from reminding you of how scummy Eric was by repeating file names slash directory names. But yeah, I think that was it for part eight. Really good fun though. Doing kind of just like input passing. I love input passing. It's so fun. Finding patterns, simplifying the patterns, figuring out how to change them, figuring out where you are, what points, using a ton of logics. Oh, I love it. Like formatting your graphs, formatting your stack. Beautiful, beautiful code. This is this is the best bit of competitive programming. And the recursion, oh, the recursion is even better because we cannot understand it. So when it works, it's amazing, it's magical. That's what I love so much about it. Like, how the, on earth do I think of this? I have no clue, but I did think of it. I did think of it. Um, and it worked. Threw it together, tested it on the on the example input, and it worked. It's not awesome. Right. <laughs> anyway, let's go to part two. Part two. Now you're ready to choose a directory to delete. Total disk space available to the file system is what is that number? Seven million? Seventy million. To run the update you need unused space of at least thirty million. You need to find a directory you can delete that will free up enough space to run the update. In the example above, the total size of the outermost directory, and thus the total amount of used space, is that number. Which means that the size of unused space is that number, which is an ass, therefore you need that much number. <laughs> this is just an example. Um so yeah, find the smallest directory that, if deleted, would free up enough space on the file system to run the update. <coughs> and what is the total size of that directory? Yes, I'm getting a bit sicker now, <laughs> sorry. So that's the question. What is the total size of that directory? I mean, the f again, the bolded words are not too useful here. I guess at least he bolded these numbers, which are, which are nice, because they're, they're key numbers. But again, the question is so short, like... No, I hope it's short, considering how hard and long the first one was, and how scummy Eric was. So thankfully, he made it short. <laughs> um, thanks, Eric. Um, so yeah, I kind of did just read the entire thing, and I kind of, uh, yeah, I did again just read the example for the same reason as before. Like, I'm not about to change my code radically, just to realise I misunderstood the question and therefore could have changed it really simply. Um, so I just ensured I answered the question, again that wasn't difficult, like it probably took a maximum of a minute to read this entire thing and understand it. Um, just because it's really, really clear. Right, so, thanks Eric though. <laughs> so my part two code. Obviously all of this is very similar, um, so things I changed is just calculating the stuff. Um, so yeah, just hard coding the, the maximum value it could be, like total disk space available, copy pasted that. Also copy pasted the amount of unused space I need, and then I just ran the code again to find out how much space I'm currently using, and that'd be this much. And using that I did some quick maths within the Python program itself. So here I just calculate the amount of free space I have. And here I calculate the amount of more free space I need. So now RR is a variable I need to look at for. R is a variable that says I need at least this much free space. More. All of this is normal. Um, you can't even ignore the sleep button. This is just something I used to developing. <laughs> like sleeping code because you only want some of your code to run and look at the output there. But you don't want the rest of your code to run and produce random outputs or crash your system. So you just sleep for like 10 seconds enough time for you to cancel the program whilst also being able to see the print statement that you wanted to look at and debug. Yeah so I mean here it's a pretty neat tactic again. I set my answer to a really high number. To be honest to one E99 is probably a smarter idea. Um instead of just spamming nines in. I don't know why I did that to be honest, but yeah. Because I mean the reason I needed to spam nines in is because I need to find the minimum value and that's a mistake I made. That's why you probably saw I got a timeout on my first try to this question, I think. Yeah. Because I just looked for the first directory that could be deleted to create that much space. Not the smallest directory, which was just... I don't know why. I, I, I remember that from the question. I just completely forgot about that whilst coding. 
So yeah, that's what this line does. It's like if this directory deleted will create enough space. So the space of this directory, which is TT, is greater than the space I need. Um, then just change your answer um, to either the smallest of answer or the current one. So what it does is just every time there's a new answer, it updates the actual answer with the smaller of the two. It's just constant comparison instead of having to create a list and adding all of your answers to the list and then finding the minimum of the list. That's just a lot more effort, a lot more taxing on Python as well because you're creating a list. Python hates lists. Don't use lists if you can. But Python hates lists. And also just completely unnecessary. More code for me to write as well. This is just a much easier way. If you ever want to find the min or max of something, this is what I recommend doing. I think I've shown you the maximum version of this before a couple of days ago. But yeah, this isn't really neat code. All of this is the same. Again, just global, globaling answer. You saw, you probably saw I had an error crop up earlier because I forgot to global it. Um, and like I was referring to it here. But as far as Python was concerned, it didn't exist, so I couldn't use it, which is why I need to global it. Um, there's no real need of having this line or this line. Um, just didn't leave them there. Right, and that's pretty much the code actually. Like all of this is the same. But now I'm just printing the answer. <coughs> so yeah, my part two modification was really quick. Um, it was just running the code to calculate that, um, then doing some quick Python maths to calculate how much space I needed, um, ensuring I was actually right. So I ran out on the puzzle input example again just to ensure I was right. Um, and for my actual code, um, yeah, just every time I had a directory that was big enough, I compared it to the minimum. If it was a minimum, saved it and great, write it after my code ended, printed it. And yeah, that's today done. I was so happy with that. That was so fun. That was actually so fun. I loved it. Lots of thinking. Really deep and logical. Really scummy from Eric, but that's, that's part of the fun. Um, so I'm not going to complain too much there. Um, yeah, that's great though. I loved it. Um, yeah, recursion, stack, simple passing. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, also, I'm pretty happy that set rec like like it didn't pass the recursive death of Python. At least that's something I didn't have to like look too look too much into. Like I didn't have to look into how to make it more efficient or optimize it too much. And like I didn't have to radically change my algorithm. I didn't have to do that because Eric thankfully made the problem easy enough for the computer. Um, for that not to be an issue, which is great. And now obviously that's also great because I didn't need to use like LRU cache from Funk Tools or anything like that. No dynamic, no dynamic programming, no random skills, just recursion. Although it is day seven, which means that he's definitely going to add some dynamic programming or something like that later down the road. Eh, we'll think about that later. Day seven was easy enough, but challenging and fun. Great. Brain, brain ripping. In a good way. Right, so that's, yeah, that's day seven done. Um, two stars complete brings me up to 14. Was that 28% the way to there? Ugh. I hate how it's coming closer and closer to the end, but also I guess closer to Christmas, more stars, more stuff to chuck on my advent calendar, my nerdy programming advent calendar, of course, building up nice. I need a board, get up low on time, so I'll storm through this. Okay, interesting. Right. Oh my god, this guy, like these people are just insane. And then I guess it normalizes a bit more up here. Not too much, yeah, 11 minutes. I think I was fast enough, was I? I don't know, part two. Again, these the insane people. And it normalizes a bit more, like times get closer together. And like the more normal people begin to solve it. And not these aliens who are just geniuses. But yeah, 15 minutes. I reckon I, I could have got it, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, this is clearly a lengthy problem though. I think this is the slowest problem so far this year. So yeah, definitely a hard one. Definitely someone people definitely something people struggled with. Um, but yeah, good fun. And people still solved it insanely fast. And yeah, 60,000 people have solved it already. Hasn't even been a day. And look at that, days one to six all have 100,000 plus people solving it. Day one, 200,000 people solving both stars. It's incredible. This progress just keeps increasing like Popularity of AOZ just skyrocketing, skyrocketing throughout the years. Like if we check 2015, like only 70,000 people have done all of part one, and that would include all the people who did it like retroactively. So after 2015, just for practice and for fun, like me. Um, I mean, I've completed 2015. But obviously, like I only started AOC in 2020. So I, I just did this last year's practice. <coughs> yeah, let's look at my personal leaderboard. Oops.
yeah, so this leaderboard. Um, I think about 25 people have done done today, which is quite a lot actually, because today was quite hard. And you need to know a lot of knowledge, um, like about recursion and stuff like that. So it must have taken people a while. Yeah, I've now third, which is nice. Yeah. Um, global points. Yeah, no more. Fair enough. Today was pretty hard. I didn't expect anyone to get global. But yeah, Aiden obviously got the win in school again. Um, bring up to five goals. Well done to him. Although, yeah, Mr. Baker finally did something. <laughs> um, he did well. I see Delta times. Yeah, I mean, seeing people, largely speaking, at large Delta times, I don't know how though. Maybe people programmed it in such a way that meant it was really hard to do part two. Or I guess, like, looking at the times people solved these, I could have done it in school. Um, and, like, obviously, you can't constantly code throughout lessons. It's like you wouldn't be spending all of your time between part one and part two coding. Um, you'd be like hopping on and off, which, which I guess explains these massive delta times. But yeah, I think some of these initial times, 16 minutes, that's good. Yeah, so these initial times are really good. And yeah, Dr. Danish was so slow on part, on part two that Mr. Baker overlapped him and stole the silver medal for overall today. Yeah, I mean, that was really slow though. I think he made a pretty basic mistake. I think, I think he didn't understand Linux well enough to like solve it fast enough. <laughs> um, because he was complaining about that when I woke up. Yeah, and yeah, he's just keeping the win pretty static. I'm not fluctuating a bit, but I think after his mess up on day three, he's he's climbing back up, which is good to see. That's what happens if you wake up late, especially on the early days. Um, if you can't be doing that. But yeah, the teachers are climbing up as well. I think. I so he's all two days. Yeah, I know Sophie was struggling loads this morning to solve today's, um, so well done to her for solving that. But it also means like she's going to be dropping down. Yeah, I think today would have dropped down a ton of people, um, just because it's really hard, comparatively. Like you can't use logic or Python skill, you have to have some real knowledge, I guess. A level of knowledge. But anyway, today was good. My favourite day so far. Probably going to be my favourite day all year. Um, but yeah, that's great. Um, that's the first week of having to code done. Two and a bit more weeks left. Um, hope you enjoyed this, these last seven videos, um, hopefully you had fun coding these, hopefully you got 14 stars, and I'll see you tomorrow for day eight.